Good evening everyone time for another Bitcoin report. Now as we expected uh, we got the sell-off today we didn't know whether it was going to be today but uh, we did have a projection of $300 on the high. We hit about 266 and then we started to sell off. Now I'm going to talk about the DDoS attacks but I first want you to look at the uh, nature of the sell-off here. You can see that uh, we had that high reached and uh, then we got a lot of red candlesticks and we tested uh, some support right about in there which is uh, matches right where we hit a high there and we got a rally we failed to break into new highs and then we started to get that gradual sell-off and you can see this red candle here is the beginning of a break of support uh, there's some more support down around this line and then we get that uh, rapid sell-off. Uh, you can see the increasing sell ticks on the red candles, uh, the red volume spikes with the red candlesticks. So that's actually a very normal looking market to me. And uh, uh, the DDoS attacks that occurred, uh, they actually, the lag as I was watching it today, most of the lag occurred during this time frame here as we were forming a bottom. Now the reason why you're seeing the length of these candlesticks here, this is the market trading back and forth between it, the bid and the ask. And you can see there's some really incredible moves here. Uh, you've got a move uh, from roughly 105 all the way up to 164. So at, at one point I, I saw the bid ask uh, was as wide as 25 to $30. Now that's to be expected as well in a rapidly moving market. Uh, people don't know where to put their bids they don't know where to put their asks and uh, so everything I'm seeing here is uh, indicative of a, of a real market now you can see we're starting to stabilize uh, the, the 150 target seems to be uh, that area of stabilization uh, and that's about a fifth little less a little more than a 50 percent uh, correction if we go down to this 126 but uh, really only a 40 percent or so correction if we look where we're stabilizing now one of the explanations for the action today and has been for the last few days has been that the DDoS attacks against Mt. Gox have been coordinated with uh, various uh, computer buy programs etc I, I don't know whether that's true or not I would venture to guess and say based upon the action that I've seen that I don't agree with that thesis and I'm going to tell you the main reason why I don't agree with that thesis uh, if the idea behind mounting the DDoS attacks is to slow down the functioning of, of Mt. Gox the trading and buying and selling and by doing so causing uncertainty and doubt to come in to the market and causing a sell-off allowing the attackers to buy up the bitcoins at a low price and then stop the attack and uh, then let the price rise and uh, sell them and make a profit that way now that's a that's a good theory the problem with that theory is that uh, that requires a positional view on the market in other words uh, the people who do that must uh, have a positional view they must view they must be uh, ha have a bullish view on the market in other words they must uh, believe that once they cease their attacks the Bitcoin will go into new highs now that's a tremendous risk because it's quite possible that uh, they could actually end up being on the losing end of that uh, if they sold their coins way up here started buying back in here but the market keep kept uh, falling getting away from them so uh, I don't really subscribe to that view I think it's much more likely that uh, whoever is behind the DDoS attacks against Mt. Gox is probably the people who have the most to lose if Bitcoin succeeds and uh, for everything I've seen today this appears to be a, a free market trading and uh, these types of parabolic breaks and stabilizations these are the sorts of things you see in a in a uh, expanding exciting market so uh, I want to look at the market depth 
uh, real quick here before we go to some questions. There's a lot of questions. But uh, the first thing I want to point out to you with the market depth, and I've been walk, watching market depth for a while, you can see we're up to 63,000 total on the coins offered. And uh, that's higher than we've seen. 40,000 has been the running total. Now you can see that 60,000 sustains itself all the way down to about 1,600 in price. And then uh, we get to 50 at about 350 in price. Uh, now, if we get down to 250, you can see you've got 44,000 for sale, but if we drop down to 200, that is almost halved, and then 150, it's halved again. So, uh, there, there are a lot of Bitcoins offered. There have been about 20,000 added, but the vast majority of those are sitting above this 250 price. So. There are people who are waiting to part with their Bitcoins, but they're not willing to take less than 250 for them. Now, on the buy side, we have roughly 80,000 uh, from 50 and up, 43,000 from 100 and up, and only about 8,000 from 150 and up. So there's definitely a bearish slant to this market right now. Uh, the crash, for whatever reason, has brought on a lot of sellers and uh, there are more bitcoins added to this market so for those reasons i would have to say that uh, we still have a bearish slant on this now let's move in to the one minute chart and take a look here we will expect to see as the market stabilizes we want to see uh, the bid ask begin to tighten so we'll go down to say uh, let's do 25 cents and uh, if we do that, we can see that uh, we're bid ask by about 166 by 167.5. If you remember, I mentioned that I saw a 20 to $25 spread between the bid ask at one point during the market volatility. That's why you saw those uh, really wide candles. But uh, at the present, we've got a, about a dollar to a dollar fifty between the bid ask. So that's actually stabilizing and uh, appears to be a healthy market uh, we seem to be leveling out at about the 50 percent level and then if we look uh, we want to pull out to the long term of course the longest term is going to give us that great candle spike uh, as we pull in we can see that incredible engulfing candlestick and uh, pulling a little bit closer we still have the engulfing candlestick and now you can see the volatility a tremendous green spike that's a lot of buyers and uh, a lot of buyers are coming in we look to be stabilizing at about half the price maybe a little bit higher so stabilizing at about a 40 percent loss you have to remember that it was only just days ago that we crossed this line so Based on those technicals, I would have to say that my opinion is this appears to be a real market and it still appears to be a bull market. So let's jump over to the questions. There's a lot of questions to answer. We'll start off with this one from Wolf. And uh, I just ask people to try to be patient. I run two channels, uh, two blogs, two forums and also work full-time so it's not easy to keep up with all these things and I have a lot of people contacting me And by the way I have a lot of people in the mainstream media contacting me and uh, don't bother to contact me because I'm not going to talk to you so uh, this is from Wolf hi BJF this will be my last post on this topic thank you in advance for months you have been asking for anyone to point out a valid weakness in Bitcoin I have done so twice in this blog and now you refuse to answer question regarding barriers to entry competing decentralized cryptocurrencies why don't you acknowledge that various entities could copy paste the code and create thousands of alternate Bitcoin systems and flood the market with unlimited decentralized cryptocurrencies now that's patently false you cannot copy and paste the code there's an existing blockchain you could create another cryptocurrency uh, but you cannot copy and paste and, and get involved with this one. So that's a patently false argument. Everyone knows that. 
you point to the wiki page that states Bitcoin is just like all other digital currencies, nothing new. Nearly all other digital currencies are centrally controlled. This means they can be printed at subjective whims of the controllers. They can be destroyed by attacking the central point of control. Arbitrary rules can be imposed upon their users. Now, these are all false. We've addressed all these. These don't apply to the Bitcoin. Being decentralized, Bitcoin solves all these problems. This does not answer the question relating to other decentralized currencies. It deflects the argument to nearly all decentralized currencies are centrally controlled. It does not address alternatives that have the exact same properties and utility as the Bitcoin that are also decentralized. This is a fact and a valid argument. More importantly, it is why Bitcoin needs to be backed with something tangible. I am not going to waste my time setting up another account in your Bitcoin site to ask questions you have posted all the Bitcoin videos on your silver site and I'm a silver follower. I think you owe your silver followers to answer this question on your silver site where you've been posting your Bitcoin videos. Once everyone understands this, then the question is how do we create a system that is back, transparent, decentralized? It can be done. Best switches. Okay. A lot of fallacies there. Okay. Uh, the Bitcoin does not need to be backed uh, just as gold and silver do not need to be backed its backing is its inherent quality and uh, we already know we've covered that in a lot of videos uh, so the big question here there really isn't any other objection that you can talk about and that's is i've already addressed this is the other cryptocurrencies now i've already told you that i've taken a position in litecoins and that i've taken a position in name coins those are the other two uh cryptocurrencies decentralized cryptocurrencies that I believe have a potential future and I've, I've mentioned the reasons why uh, Litecoin because it uses script which is a different uh, algorithm and Namecoin because it's association with a unique DNS system now I may be wrong but uh, the main point is going to be uh, whether or not the network effect is valid or not. Now, I think the network effect is clearly valid. Uh, I, I think it's been proven with the Internet and the success of Internet businesses. If you followed the dot-com bubble, you know that uh, out of the carnage of that uh, dot-com bubble, there emerged basically a, a handful of companies uh, that were successful that never really sustained any uh, damage of course we have Amazon we have eBay uh, we have uh, a couple of others Google emerged later uh, Cisco wasn't really dot com of course we have Microsoft and Apple uh, but if we look at eBay is a very good example this is a very good example of the network effect now it's quite possible for there to be competitors to eBay uh, there's there's nothing unique about eBay's model, although they have uh, integrated the PayPal system. But again, there's nothing particularly particularly unique about eBay that cannot be duplicated by someone else. And I would have to say that we could say the same thing about Craigslist. Uh, Craigslist also has a unique model, and uh, they've kind of cornered that uh, classified ad space. Now the question is. Uh, why can't the value of uh, eBay be diluted uh, by competitors? And the answer is very simple. It's a network effect. Uh, there are so many uh, reasons to want to go to the number one. And uh, I know Amazon has tried to enter the space with some relative success. So that might be the silver to eBay's gold. But for the most part, uh, you have the number one and the number two and then a whole bunch of irrelevant ones. So there's no reason why that argument does not also apply to the Bitcoin. Uh, unless the Bitcoin is cracked and unless the Bitcoin is neutralized in some manner, then the Bitcoin is always going to be the eBay or the Amazon of the cryptocurrencies. There will be others. But I do not expect to see a lot of market cap bleeding into them. And certainly if they don't offer any advantages over the Bitcoin due to the fact that it is divisible down to those eight zeros, 
there simply won't be any reason for anyone to abandon the Bitcoin and go with something else unless it offers something better. So I don't think that's a valid argument. I think I've answered that. So let's get over to another question. I went ahead and opened this into a, a, another window because this is a uh, Reddit post that's talking about why Bitcoin will crash to zero by a Bitcoin supporter. So let's address these arguments. Okay, let me start by saying that I think the general idea of a cryptographic currency is a brilliant one. I can definitely see Bitcoin establishing itself as a major world currency and basically doing to fiat currencies what email did to the postal system. However, whenever I mention Bitcoin to anyone, I strongly encourage them not to invest more than they are prepared to lose. I myself only own 10 Bitcoins. Why? Because Bitcoin has flaws and it has potential enemies. And I think there's a very good chance that the currency could be basically destroyed overnight. The problems. The code. Bitcoin is not a magic black box. It is a complicated piece of open source software written by a community of volunteers and hobbyists with various degrees of ability. It contains bugs. What these bugs are and how serious their symptoms will remain to be seen. We have already had a few serious problems such as the fork and it's likely there will be more to come. Now that's pretty much a valid argument. The fork was real. Uh, of course the fork was solved very very quickly and uh, there is that sort of majority vote type of thing and once the network uh, agrees upon an answer than anybody who's disagreeing with it obviously is going to be going down the wrong path so the fork solved itself very very quickly and you can see that's the only one he lists so that's the only one we can address the value of exploits with the soaring value of bitcoins it's likely that it will increasingly become a target for attack if someone can find an exploit a flaw they can make a fortune Due to the nature of Bitcoin, it would be almost impossible to discover the culprit or recover any losses. This was already happening when there was almost nothing to gain from it. And uh, there's a, a forum link there. Well, so far that criticism has failed. And uh, if obviously if there were any kind of exploit or flaw, then the price would already be zero. So the Bitcoin has already withstood tremendous attack. Uh, I find it to be absolutely uh, astonishing that an out-of-the-box cryptocurrency like Bitcoin has been as successful as it has. Uh, I cannot say enough about the genius of Satoshi Nakamoto, whoever this person or persons is or are. Uh, it is absolutely astounding to me that the first trial run of this idea, which this idea is not going away even if the bitcoin goes away uh, this idea is not going away but uh, the phenomenal uh, success of the bitcoin and the genius behind it uh, honestly it leaves me speechless uh, government intervention currency manipulation is one of the core economic controls of government Mass adoption of Bitcoin would render this tool ineffective or even unusable. It's certainly conceivable that the U.S. or EU could implement a blanket ban on Bitcoin trades, which would utterly cripple the currency's expansion. As we're now hitting the point where large-scale funds are buying into Bitcoin, such a move would cause a rapid exodus of significant funds by a few small high-worth net individuals over a very short time scale. This combined with the effect of legislation would almost inevitably trigger a large-scale panic sell-off. There would be no market remaining to allow for the currency's revival. No, that's, that's just wrong, 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 and wrong. I've already pointed out that uh, there are plenty of high net worth individuals uh, right now who could buy the market cap of the Bitcoin th uh, 30 times over. We're talking under $2 billion. Uh, Carlos Slim is worth over $60 billion. So that's obviously a bogus argument. Now, uh, this trigger sell-off panic, uh, we saw that today, and Bitcoin seems to be stabilizing. Uh, and I, I don't agree that there would be no market because it seems like uh, the currency is surviving. Remember, 
if the protocol of the Bitcoin is not broken, but the exchanges are hacked or attacked, whatever it is, uh, the Bitcoin's going to stand. It's only if there is a true flaw found in the Bitcoin. Now, uh, I've mentioned before that uh, Microsoft and others have put test boxes up on the internet, invited hackers to try to take them down, and of course they lasted all of about 30 minutes. The Bitcoin has lasted at least four years, being subject to every attack known to man, and it's still standing. So I think the money is against this guy on this one. Corporate sabotage, MoneyGram, Western Union, PayPal. Just three examples of multi-billion dollar multinationals with business models which would be rendered obsolete should Bitcoin achieve widespread adoption. Bitcoin, despite its rapid expansion and long-term potential, is tiny compared to many large organizations which have a vested interest in seeing the currency fail. At its current size, the Bitcoin economy could be toppled for a handful of million dollars, enough to buy and sell large volumes, specifically to cause huge price swings to undermine confidence with smear campaigns or directly attack flaws in the software network that underpins it. Okay, well, we've seen all those and they failed. Okay, so uh, you can buy and sell all you want, but uh, again, you can't sell something you don't have. Uh, that only happens in gold and silver and stock markets. But in the Bitcoin market, if you don't have Bitcoins, you can't sell them. You can only sell them if you bought them. So that argument is bogus. Certainly a handful of millions of dollars could not uh, buy up enough Bitcoins to have any effect. And we've already seen the huge price swings. And uh, is that undermining confidence? You tell me. We've seen the smear campaigns. Are they working uh, and the direct attacks against the software, well, we haven't seen them yet. So, again, that's a failure. Number five, fundamental flaws. The design of Bitcoin is not perfect. We're already seeing the blockchain becoming bloated by microtransactions of Satoshi Dice. What if the volume of these were to rise a thousandfold to, through deliberate flooding or simply through natural expansion of the currency? We're already worried about mining guilds which have control of too much computing power. 51% is quoted as the minimum level required in order to subvert the Bitcoin transaction system successfully. This is not strictly true. 51% is simply the point at which an attack becomes more likely to succeed than fail. It's perfectly possible that an entity with significant non-majority mining power could succeed in poisoning the blockchain with dishonest blocks. This can be attempted over and over again by a motivated group or individual. It only needs to succeed once to cause irreparable damage to Bitcoin's credibility. Yes, that could happen. That that may happen. That might happen. But then again, it might not happen. And uh, this is the test run. Uh, like I said, I haven't thrown a lot of money at this. I consider it venture capital. And we'll see if the Bitcoin can survive. But I can tell you this. If the Bitcoin doesn't survive, the idea of a cryptocurrency will survive. And uh, that's the reason why it's already game over. Uh, with the current public interest in the currency, the media spotlight focused on it, the fledgling involvement of high-value investors likely to abandon Bitcoin forcefully if they foresee any potential losses. I believe that Bitcoin is extremely vulnerable at present. Any one of these problems listed could trigger a panic which would crash the currency overnight and in a way it wouldn't likely recover from. So whilst I'm not concerned about the effects of speculative bubbles and I do believe Bitcoin is destined for long-term success, I urge caution. Please don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Well, obviously that's the case. Uh, and if we go back to Clark Moody, uh, the thing is, is that uh, can you really argue that they haven't uh, invested only what they intend to lose? Let's think about the numbers here, okay? So we have, uh, what is it, about 11 million Bitcoins, and we're at $166. Can you think of 11 million people who can afford to lose 150 bucks? I can. So the question is uh, not... Uh, can they crash the Bitcoin by buying up and selling a bunch of Bitcoins? The question is, is can they discourage enough people who are fascinated by this idea, who like myself are willing to throw away 150 bucks just to see if a new system 
a new idea, a revolutionary idea, one that cuts out central banksters, governments, capital controls, exchange controls. Are you willing to throw away 150 bucks to see if the future of the world could be different? I certainly am. And we'll talk to you next time.